All right, so this is my June stock photography earnings report. I'm sorry this is a little bit late. I'm posting this is almost the end of July now, but I had a really busy month, moved my family over to a new house, so it's been pretty crazy. Haven't had as much time for YouTube or stock photography, but I'm gonna try to get back into the habit of posting these at the start of the month for the previous month. So here are my stock photo sales for June. It was a pretty standard month as far as like the order goes of the stock sites. Um, Vanto was first, Shutterstock was second, Deposit Photos was third. That is pretty typical. Now, one thing that was different this month is I made my first sale on Lobster.media. Now, what Lobster is, is it's a site that sells user-generated content. So what it will do is it'll look at your Flickr, your Instagram, or your Facebook feeds, and then what you can do is you can set it up to auto-sell those photos. So I set this up like maybe six months ago and I haven't had a single sale, but I got my first sale this month. So it's a good idea in theory. It doesn't look like there's that many buyers on it yet, or maybe there's on there, but there's not buying my photos, but it is promising to see you get a first sale and I'm hopefully that I'll get more sales on this site in the future. One of the good things about this site is you don't actually have to put any effort into setting it up, right? You obviously have to link your accounts and set it to auto sell, but after that you don't have to upload your photos all the time. So it's probably worth it to set it up um, if you do post to the social media sites just to see if you do start getting any sales. So June wasn't really a great month for me for my stock photography sales. If you compare it to May, in May I made around $630, then June I only made $360, so that's almost half. Um, but that happens sometimes when you're selling stock. My portfolio didn't change at all, I just didn't get that many sales that month. One of the things I notice is, is that sometimes on one of the sites I'll make a big sale, and normally that will happen like about once a month. So maybe on my own website, or 500px, or Fine Art America, but I didn't make any big sales on any of those sites in June, which is probably one of the reasons why June was a bit lower. Now, another thing that could have contributed to the low sales was I wasn't really uploading many photos on the stock sites in June. So I was really busy, you know, preparing for the move and getting my family moved over to the new house. So I didn't have a lot of time for stock photography. One of the things that I did do was I went on to Viewbug and I submitted all the photos that I had on there over to their stock sales section. Now I went through and I did that, which was like about an hour and a half of mindless, you know, pointing and clicking and taking the photos that I had uploaded previously previously and then setting them up to be sold as stock, but it's been almost a month since I did that and they haven't even been reviewed yet. So it doesn't look like Viewbug is really serious about selling, um, setting up like a stock store on their site, but maybe in the future they will be. So we'll see if those get accepted and if there's any sales from them. Another thing that happened over the past month was one of the sites that I uploaded my photos to went out of business. And this happens all the time in stock photography. There's constantly new websites coming up and then after a year or two, they then go out of business. The one that went out of business recently was called WeMark. And it was a bit interesting in that it was a stock photography site, but it was based on a cryptocurrency. So there's a number of these sites that have popped up over the past couple of years and what they do is they say that they're going to revolutionize the stock photography industry by using cryptocurrency um, or you know bitcoin like technology to sell your photos but as of yet none of them have been really successful and i've been kind of keeping an eye on them and i don't think any of them are really set up for success here because they don't seem to be really focusing on the right things so what WeMark did was they basically just set up a stock photography site with their own cryptocurrency, but everything else was exactly the same as the stock site. There was really no advantage to the buyers to go to WeMark as opposed to going to Shutterstock. So they really weren't able to take the money that they made from selling their cryptocurrency and convert it into an actual sustainable business. One of the big problems with selling your stock individually and trying to compete with Shutterstock or or Adobe Stock or any other sites that I sell my photos on is that those sites already offer very low cost, high quality photos. And they offer them as part of a subscription. So what happens is that someone can go in and purchase a subscription and they can get a number of different photos. And then what they can then do is they can combine the earnings over a month and send you one payout. So there's only one transaction fee from PayPal. Now, if you're trying to sell your photos at a low cost 
to buyers individually, that transaction fee can really eat up a lot of your earnings. So as an example for PayPal, what PayPal does is it takes 30 cents off of every transaction and then adds 2.9% on top of that. Okay? Doesn't sound like a lot being 30 cents, but I have my photos up on Pexels. And if someone donates $1 to me for one of my photos, just as a $1 donation, great. If enough people did that, it would add up. But the problem is, is that from that $1, 33 cents of that ends up going to PayPal. So those transaction fees are really eating up 33% of that revenue. Now, one of the things that cryptocurrencies and blockchain have the potential of doing is getting rid of that transaction fee. So allowing me to sell my photos for $1 if I wanted to. And if I could get a large enough market, meaning if there was hundreds of people spending a dollar on each of my photos every month, then that's something that I might consider doing. So I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments and via email and via the web form of my website about what equipment people should buy to get started into stock photography. Now my answer to that probably is whatever equipment you have, whatever equipment you can afford. One of the things to note is that by far half the revenue I make every month are from photos shot on a D5000. And what a Nikon D5000 was, is that was a Nikon's entry level DSLR 10 years ago. So I make most of my sales online from a decade old camera that I uploaded a long time ago. My smartphone that I have right now shoots better pictures than that DSLR. So it really isn't about what type of camera you have, it's more about how you use it. Now more recently, I've been shooting on a Micro Four Thirds camera. I've got the Panasonic G9, and I really like the Micro Four Thirds format because the lenses are so much smaller, and I like to hike with my camera. I like to carry a bunch of lenses around. It's really hard to do when you have the bigger cameras. So I've been really happy with the Micro Four Thirds, and that's all I've shot with over the past year. However, there are a couple of things that the Micro Four Thirds cameras that have the smaller center aren't that good at. One of them is really low light photography. So if you wanna go out and do Milky Way shots, they just don't look that good on a Micro Four Thirds camera compared to a full frame. So if you're gonna sell them in stock, you really can't compete that way. The other one is dynamic range. Now, I've had full frame cameras in the past. I used to have a Nikon D600, and you get a lot better dynamic range out of the full frame sensors. Now that doesn't matter all the time, but there's certain times when I'm shooting sub sunsets and really a lot of landscape photo photography where I would have better photos come out with better dynamic range on the camera. And that's why I got this. This is the Panasonic S1R, and I'm gonna use this more for my landscape photography and when I'm going to places to shoot specifically landscape shots. And then I'll keep the Micro Four Thirds camera for just kind of when I'm out during the day or when I'm going on hikes, I'll continue to use that. Now, one of the things to note is that I bought that camera 100% with earnings from the stock photography sites. And that's the great thing about stock photography. Photos that I was taking seven, eight, nine years ago and uploaded to these stock sites, they keep selling and those earnings added up and I'm now able to buy like a brand new full frame camera with it. And that was really the goal when I started stock was to be able to purchase new cameras and lenses without dipping into kind of my family budget. And I've kind of got to that point, so I'm pretty happy about it. All right, now this is my second monthly stock photography earnings site. I'm gonna keep doing this monthly. So what I've done is I've created a playlist to show all of these videos where I'm doing my earnings reports. You wanna look back at previous ones and I'll put a link to that up here. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so now because then you'll get a notification when the next earnings report comes out and I can let you know which sites are doing well that month. Best of luck selling your photos online.